work it through uniform flow. Then uh, we discussed gradually varied flow, its computation. Then last, I think, one lecture, we discussed uh, a rapidly varied flow. One case of rapidly varied flow, which was basically flow or spillways. Okay. And uh, so we'll con uh, continue with that. And mostly we are doing design of spillways. Okay. The spillway shapes, at least we're trying to design. Uh, and we said, OK, if we get a parabolic shape with that projectile equation, uh, uh, then that we call as Bayesian's profile. OK, and Bayesian did a lot of tests. And uh, he gave some uh, experimental um, um, values on different uh, spillways on different heads also on different slopes also so those were preserved by usbr uh, us bureau of reclamation and then usbr did their ex some more experiments okay uh, to check whether bayesian's profile is really reasonable or or we need to modify it and then uh, after extensive tests uh, the usbr itself they developed uh, kind of uh, you know coordinates of the pro of the profile of them, right? So you can have x and y coordinates. So for example, at the crest of the spillway, they say x is zero, y is zero, for example, and then they put some okay, x is one point one meters, for example. What should be the y? Okay. Similarly, they, they made for different types of heads. Okay, if the if this is your spillway, right, and if the head is this much, head above crest is this much. So what what will be the profile of the uh, flow, right? Uh, then they did for let's say if the head is a little bit different, what will be the profile? So they made different charts, different tables, which gave coordinates of the profile flow spillway. But then U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said, okay, that is okay. You know, it's good that you have profile uh, tabulated profiles for each uh, each uh, type of uh, had and each type of spillway upstream uh, surface, upstream face, but we should make something like which is uh, simpler, okay? Like a small equation, simple equation that doesn't need you know, tables. You have to look all the time at tables. So they came up with this equation, which is again parabolic, almost parabolic. And uh, it's like a combination of Bayesian's data and the USBR data. So all both the both the Bayesian's data and USDR, USBR data they were in tabular forms uh, for different types of spillways for different types of heads. Uh, so but then US US Army Corps of Engineers said okay let's develop a simple equation for all of that data. So if you put uh, x here that equa this equation will give you y. So you don't need to look for the tables now. So that is the equation and. Uh, Origin for this equation, because x and z, x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, should be defined at some point, right? So they are defining that origin should be at this point. Okay, this is the crest level of the spillway. So crest means the highest level of the spillway. So this is the origin, and then below this, you have this profile, basically follows this equation, right? And above this, you have certain profiles. Uh, they did these experiments at something called the Waterways Experiment Station, WES. And they said, okay, we can have some standard shapes of spillways. Uh, so we'll see them uh, soon. So what is this head? It is design head excluding velocity head. So at this point, you know, at this level, you have some water surface. Right? So that will be HD. So height above the crest. Uh, but that's not the overall head, right? Overall head is HE, total energy. Total energy above the crest. So that HE will also include some velocity head, right? V is square divided by 2G. Alpha V is square divided by 2G. Uh, so we are not including, in this equation, we are not including velocity head. The reason is this guy HD is easily calculated. We can easily find out the depth of the flow, right? Uh, but for finding out the velocity head, we have to find out the velocity. So uh, that's why it seemed uh, easier to just include HD in the equation. And HD is basically total energy above the crest minus approach velocity head. So HA is approach velocity head, HE is total energy head. So we can get uh, different shapes by changing M and K. 
Okay. So let us see. And these are uh, what they call as waterways experiment station standard ships. And they are mostly used in IS code also. We'll see some, some of that, one example of that at least. And uh, you have, if the upstream slope, so that is this guy, upstream slope is vertical, then following this equation, following this point, the highest point, you can use this equation. So this equation is same as this equation, uh, but n k here is two, so you can put two here, and n here is 1.85. So if h d goes here, it will be 1.85. So that is the equation, right? Uh, similar, and this will be the profile. Similarly, if you have, let's say, different slope of upstream, for example, this is the upstream slope. Okay, three is to two. Uh, then your k will be 1.93 and n will be 1.81. Okay. So that is what is shown here, the profile of this equation. So basically you can change k and n depending on the upstream uh, phase slope. Uh, so you, and you have four four shapes I have given here. Mostly, what we see is that the vertical slope is mostly used. Uh, and in some cases, you might be able to basically cut this portion off also. Uh, and that will not affect the design itself because as long as this cut here, that's called a setback for some specific purposes. As long as that is below the below two point three of the total head it does not affect the profile shape because it does not affect the velocities. So we don't have to worry about this part, at least for now. But if so, if you are, if you are slope, if you want to design a spillway which has a different slope, let's say we have here standard shapes are two is to three, three is to three slope, one is to three slope and vertical slope. But if your slope is a little bit different, then you can basically plot this thing with respect to the slope and plot this thing with respect to the slope and interpolate the lines, find out the, your k and n value. Okay, so that is when you go to practice and you want to design a spillway which has different slope than these standard shapes. Any questions in this? So this, this is called Ogi spillway, okay? So this profile, all these profiles, for example, this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, we call them Ogi spillway shapes. Uh, this is from IS6934, which is used to design spillways. So we have, they have given basically same equations. You will see here, this is same as the previous equation. And they have vertical shape, vertical upstream slope. And this will be the equation of the profile below the crest point, crest level. And uh, for the upstream, they have given simple equation, this upstream quadrant parabolic equation. And then uh, they are, we have here A and B for upstream, um, this guy here, upstream quadrant. We can find out A, okay, depends on the height of the dam, which is P. P here is this guy, height of the dam from the bed to the upstream, uh, to, to the crest level. That is P and HD is the design here that we already discussed. So we can find out A and B from these plots as well. And K2, K2 is basically the same as K in the basic in the US Army Corps of Engineers equation. So that is this guy here. So what I want to say is basically IS code follows the same as US Army Corps of Engineers. That equation. Any any question in that so far? It should be straightforward. Okay, who can tell uh, why we are uh, applying this Pogi spillway shape? Why not something like triangular? Or why not something like this? this thing? So the losses, the losses will, be, will more be more in those shapes. shapes. What kind of losses? You mean friction losses? Yes, sir. Friction and as well as eddies will also form at that end point. Okay, that is perhaps one reason. Friction uh, when in rapidly varied flows, we don't worry about friction because the distance over which rapidly varied flow takes place is small. Uh, so friction directly depends on the length. Okay, so distance. 
So friction will not, but eddies maybe we'll, we'll consider that. But I, I want a more, more clearer answer why we are going to throw the ship. Self, the bed can get corroded because of the difference in pressure and some turbulence. Okay, so that is uh, cavitation. Cavitation, you want to avoid cavitation? Okay. Yes. So, but how, how did, like, you were here to see how did we find out this shape? You know, this is a specific shape. You guys are all correct, but I, I want a direct answer rather than the, this is like uh, implications of this shape. How did we, or, or let me rephrase this question. How did we get this shape? Um, basically, how did we get uh, this kind of shape here? Did we do, like, did I show you in previous uh, slide, previous lecture, what happens to flow or spillway or a sharp crested wave? And what is the advantage of this guy? Sir, mainly it is a like projectile, so, so we get this shape. Yeah, projectile, we get this shape. And uh, what is the advantage of that? Let me remove all of this. What is the advantage of that? That's what I want to get actually. Also. If you remember, we said, okay, if we have a sharp crested wear like this, and if we have, let's say, flow like this, and we will have a profile like this, right? That is a projectile we developed, the equation of projectile. Then we said there is just some uh, property here at this point along this line, lower nap. What is what? Sir, maybe the pressure is zero and along that. Time. Exactly, exactly. Good, good. So the, at the pressure, gauge pressure at this point is zero. This point, this surface and this surface are at atmospheric pressure, right? So we don't have negative pressure, we don't have positive pressure. But that is the advantage of this profile. Okay, let us let us move on. Okay, so how much is the design discharge uh, for the spillway? Uh, you might know this equation, Q is equal to Cl He raised power 1.5. Well, He you might not know, but H you might know. This is all types of wears. You can calculate the discharge. You can measure the discharge if you know the head, if you know the height of the water above that wear. For example, if you have broadcasted wear, you know how much is the, let's say this is the wear. And let's say this is the head, height of the water above this thing. You can just apply this wear equation and find out the discharge. You don't have to take the measurements, okay? So this is sim similar to that wear equation. The only thing is we have here some E here, okay? Uh, and then some coefficient C, which might be different from the broad crested wear. So Q is discharge in CFS. L is the effective length of spillway. What do, what do I mean by effective length? I'll, I'll tell, you, tell you in just a few minutes. And HE is the total head. So here HE includes the velocity head as well. Okay. So let's say if this was your spillway. Okay. And uh, water level at this point at the top before the spillway is H. So that will be HD. So in calculating the discharge, we'll include HD plus we'll include velocity head also. Okay, and uh, what experiments have shown that for high spillway, what are high spillway for which the height of spillway is large, more than 1.33 times design head. Okay, so let me clear this thing again to make it more clearer. Let's say this is your spillway, and this is your design head HD. And let's say this is your height of the spillway. So height is above the crest. Let's say this was the crest level. Okay. So this is edge here. If the height of the net, sometimes they call it P, doesn't matter, P or H, small H, they are same both height of the spillway. If the height of the spillway is greater than 1.33 times the design head, that is called high spillway. Okay, 
For high spillway, what's the advantage? Because the depth of the flow is quite large, so the approach velocity will be small. When the approach velocity is small, the head approach velocity head is small. Okay, in general, so H A can be neglected. So this guy can be neglected, right? So what we can see is H E is equal to H D or close to H D. So we have two conditions here. Uh, one, we have a high spillway for which the height is more than 1.33 times the design head, and because actual head uh, or the operating head, the second condition is the actual head or the operating head is same as the design head. So you see, this is we design a spillway for one one design discharge. So that means one head, but in actuality, in actual cases. Uh, you might have sometimes you might have design head higher, and sometimes you might have operating head which is higher, and sometimes it might be lower depending on the flow conditions. But here the two conditions I'm trying to say is the uh, spillway is high, and the operating head is equal to design head. Okay, in that case, we know total energy can be equal to H D because H A is close to zero because it's a high spillway. So this C here, we call that under these two conditions, this is a design uh, coefficient, right? C D. C is called a C D, which has a clear value of 4.05. So the point is, if you have a high spillway, and if the operating head is equal to design head, at that time C is equal to C D, right? We'll see how we can use it for low spillways, for which the height of the Dam is smaller as compared to the high, high spillways. H by H D is it should be less than yeah, less than 1.33. So approach velocity cannot be neglected because you see the dam is small. It is small. Let's say dam is small, and H is very large. So in that case, H A sorry V A might have large effect. Okay, so we cannot ignore this guy here. So at that time, H E is not equal to H D. So I cannot say H E is equal to H D. So, but we still have to use this equation, and that means we have to find out a different C for that condition. So, and then for U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they did a lot of experiments, and they came up with this chart. Okay. The second condition is okay. One, you have low spillway. The second condition may be that even the discharge, even the actual head which is operating, it may not be equal to the design head, right? Let's say there was a flood. Okay, you have not designed uh, your um, spillway for that flood. You know, the flood is bigger than the design head, so the actual head might be different than the design head. Or sometimes you may have droughts, right? Uh, so actual head might be a little bit lower than the design head. So for these two conditions, you know, low spillway, one condition. The second condition, the actual or operating head is different than the design head because design head is a sim single value. Let's say I design my uh, spillway for a head of one point, mm, let's say ten meters. That's a single value, but in actuality. Uh, that value may be exceeded, or it may the actual value will be lower than that. So in both that those cases, C is not equal to C D, right? Because C D was specific. So what they did, they developed a curve like this. On x-axis, you have C divided by C D, where C D is 4.03, and on y-axis, they have H E divided by H D for different heights of the Dam. So H divided by H D is 0.2. But this guy here is when your uh, head, when H divided by H D is equal to one. This line here is when H divided by H D is 1.33 or greater. So that means high spillway. So this line is for high spillway. And these all these lines are for low spillways, right? When diff with different actual head conditions. Now, if we if we look at this high spillways and we see H E is equal to H D, so that means this ratio will be equal to one. So this is 0.6. This is one here. So if we go like this and we go to this curve, 
which is high spillway curve, and we go down, we find out C by C. So that is basically equal to one. Okay. So that was the, our earlier case. So from this equation, we can also see that even if H E divided by H D is one, so that means the operating conditions are same as the design conditions, but the spillway is low. So C will be C will be less than C D. So basically, the discharge will be a little bit lower for low spillways, right? Uh, how can we visually see it? I will try to show it here. Uh, if you have, let's say, okay, let's, this is your spillway, okay? So the height of spillway is, let's say, um, two meters, very small spillway, but the design head is four meters, right? So basically, it's not a spillway because it's very small. So HD divided by H is almost 0 0.05. So maybe this curve will be followed. So it becomes like a sill. We call it sill. Uh, in that case, the discharge is significantly reduced. As compared to now, you look at a case when you have this is your spillway. This spillway, the height is four meters. And the design head is only two meters. Now, in this case, normally the flow will be a little bit higher, okay, as compared to this case for the same head. If if you have the same head, so the point is for low spillways, the discharge is a little bit lower than high spillways, and if the design, if the operating head is uh, higher or lower than the design head, the discharge will be lower. So from these curves, we can see that. Now I'll show you, there is some example, I think uh, Rosa or Arif will cover this in a uh, tutorial. So I'll not cover this because we don't have too much time. We have quiz also, i just move over this. <clears throat> so what we what have we so, showed is Q we can get once we know C, L and H, E, right? And L was effective length. Uh, I think I forgot to discuss this, let us see. Okay. Okay, I'll will discuss soon, don't worry. Okay, but the point is once you design a dam, you can clearly find out, okay, what's the, you can do experiments on this and you'll see what's the elevation above the uh, crest and how much is the discharge. And then once you do those experiments, you'll find out some values here and you can fit a simple equation to that, simple curve to that. The advantage of that is you don't need to find out C, you don't need to find out L, you don't need to find out HE, right? You can just, this is from the observations and you can use any time the discharge, the head is let's say 304, you can just go here and you can make the discharge. So that is called a rating curve, okay? So rating curve is discharge versus water surface elevation. Now rating curves, we can do, you know, we can do uh, calculations, we can do measurements and we can find out, okay, corresponding to this height, how much was the discharge and we'll, we'll do that multiple times, find out the curve. But without that also, if we just use this equation, find out C and find out what is the head corresponding to different height levels, we can use this equation and make that plot, right, like this. So spillway is designed for a one head, that is HD, but it must operate for a ra wide range of heads. I said this is our spillway, and we did this was designed for a head of this much, but sometimes the head might be a little bit higher, sometimes it might be a little bit lower. So the spillway has to operate in all those ranges, and we have to find out the discharge in all those cases. And it has been shown that the spillway studies have shown that head can be safely exceeded by 50%. So if this head was two, we can easily exceed this by one point. So this will be three. Up to three, we can exceed and we can still use this equation and find out the correct values of it. Beyond that, there will be cavitation and that could be that could harm the spillway. So for other heads and other design uh, upstream faces. We can use this equation for different heads, right? And we can use this correction factors on this side. So this this thing, this curve was for these curves were for upstream slope was vertical. 
but sometimes you know we have seen that upstream slope might have upstream face might have some slope in that case once we find out c from this let's say our head was 0.4 he divided by h was 0.4 and our spillway was let's say uh, a high spillway we found out c is let's say 0.86 okay 0.86 so that was per perpendicular when the when the upstream face is vertical so that 0.8 let's say 6 we found if our upstream face is let's say has some slope of 3 is to 1 so we can correct we can find out the correction factor let's say 1.01 and multiply that so that will be our c so we can use this equation itself without doing any experiments and find out the rating curve from this equation any any questions on that okay so let us see um i want to ask a question but the problem is we don't have too much time so let, let me move on i'll ask you some question later So this is Sardar Sarovar Dam. We might have heard about it. Um, <clears throat> the discharge we say is affected by the head, right? But it's also affected by the pairs, by the length. We said, okay, Q is equal to C L H raised power 1.5, H E raised power 1.5. We should not forget this E here. So this we discussed in detail. that c depends on the operating head conditions it also depends on what type of spillway upstream face you have um and it also depends on whether you have high spillway or low spillway so the first thing you have to find out is whether you have high spillway or low spillway but we know the discharge also depends on this thing here l the length over which the discharge is happening right so that length depends on the effect the pairs let's say pairs means uh, this is your dam for example these guys here this this part is the spillway right this part is spillway but actually entire thing is spillway but this is over which the flow will, is happening and this part here this is pair 1 pair 2 pair 3 and this is also pair we have a lot of pairs they are used to uh, basically support the gate right on a spillway let's say this is your spillway you will have a gate here to basically resist the flow like this in gated spillway at least you will have a gate and then you can lift that gate to allow the water to flow over but these gates gates they have to be supported who will support it these pairs will support it okay For example, this dam has okay. This is design flood. So that is one value. This is OB shape. Um, length of spillway is almost point seven five kilometers. Crest level. So crest level is top point from the bottom. And uh, spillway discharge the same as the design discharge. Radial gates. So this was radial gates. This guy here. You, you can lift it radially. I'll show you some pictures later, maybe. number of spillway gates it has 23 gates one gate here second gate here third gate here fourth gate here fifth gate here six seven so all the um, all the gates should be between pairs and uh, each gate is this much width 18.3 meters width and this is the height so that is an example of a og shaped spillway right or normal Okay, so this is another dam which we did. Uh, we basically checked the design uh, of this barrage in Rajasthan. So this is the spillway shape. This was again OB spillway shape. We did ex uh, we did extensive understanding of this thing here. And then uh, what we have here is the gate, right? This is the radial gate. This guy here. And when you lift the gate up to this point. it will allow some water to flow through and then you have something called stream basin here and a lot of other things which we have not studied yet but we are only trying to find out the shape of the spillway okay. now this is a top view 
of the that was the sectional view. This is the top view, and these are pairs. The gate was between gates are between these right pairs. I think it had 28 or 29 gates. These were the pairs. So these pairs basically they they will affect the flow, right? All of them will affect the flow. So those are some examples, and this was our example. Uh, this was our discharge, and we want to see what is the effect of pairs. As we know, C what it depends on. Now, L what it depends on. So let's say this was our and flow is happening. Let's say this is top view. We are talking about top view. We have a pair here. We have a pair here, and flow is happening this way. This is a spillway. So what will these pairs do? They will basically contract the flow a little bit. Right, so that effective length between two, they, we call them uh, pairs. We call this length the bay. Okay, from one pair to another pair, it's called bay. One bay. Okay, so effective length will be L naught, the total length between the pairs, or total length of the bay, minus some contraction effect that was because of the pairs, because that will affect the flow, it reducing the effective length. So that contraction is given by K and E, K and H E. A simple equation we are doing. L naught is clear spin of one way. K is contraction coefficient. N is two for each uh, gate pair. For example, N is one for this guy. N is one for this guy. This pair. So total N for one way is two. Okay. So the shape, this K uh, contraction uh, coefficient. That depends on the shape and the position of the pair. We'll see that also. It depends on the head condition also, whether your head operating head is design head or something different than design head. And it also depends on the depth of flow, which means the whether the dam is high spillway, whether the spillway is high or low. And it also depends on whether you are, let's say this was your one pair, and this is the bay. And then you have second pair, third pair, this is second bay. And then we have a pair also here, and this is bay. Flow is happening this way, right? A K will also depend whether these bays are these gates. You will have gates on them, right? Whether they are closed or open. If they are closed, then K a lot of flow will be contracted this way. But if they are open, then the flow will not be contracted that much. So K will be a little bit less. So K also depends on whether the adjacent bays, adjacent gates are open or not. Here's a simple example. This is also from uh, US Army Corps of Engineers. You have different types of pairs you can have. For example, this one, round. You have triangular flow is happening in this direction, right? So this will affect the flow less, and this will affect the flow more, right? And uh, you have different types of pairs. And the US Army Corps of Engineers, they have given an equation which gives you corresponding to whether you are a design head or something else, what will be the contraction coefficient K for different types of pairs. Right? Similarly, for time, they call this, this guy here round noses, rows, they call it type 2 pair. And then you have type 3, type 4, type uh, one also, which is basically square, rectangular, you can say. And then uh, same thing here, K, for example, in most cases, K will be uh, less than 0 0.05, okay? Sometimes it can go higher, for example, if the design head is too much, or if the height of the pair is too much. So we can think about those things. I'll just need uh, maybe three, four minutes to complete this. So effect of the pair uh, is, we saw that it affects the discharge, but it affects the upper nap of the profile also, right? Let's say this was your lower, this was your spillway, and this is your upper nap profile without any pair. But if you have a pair on both sides, it can affect the uh, profile, upper profile. And that is important because we want to know what should be the height of the abutments. Abutments means on the sides. On the sides, we have some structure to support the spillway, right? So th that's called, you might have pairs here. 
this is pier this is pier and you might have a lot of piers but at the boundary at the banks of the river okay uh, we have something called abutments they support the pier they support the spillway uh, if you don't have any pier the flow will be like this the upper profile will be like this but if you have tied two pier the flow will be a little bit higher right the upper profile will be a little bit higher because the flow is getting contracted so the effective length is getting lesser so the height will be more so we have this height we have to exactly know because if our abutment is a little bit lower than that then uh, overflow will happen right and that's not good for the dam which is adjacent to that so we have to worry about that also and this equation is for different design heads different heads so this this condition for example is when the head is exactly equal to design head and the operating head is equal to design head similarly this was at the center line okay so this was let's say this is your abutment this is your abutment let's say it doesn't have any pier right this profile was at the center line now near the abutments there is significant curvature of the profile right so the profile basically the upper nap basically increased in height and we have to know exactly what is that height because that will tell us how high how much high we have to uh, make the abutments it also will tell us what should be the um, elevation of the gate for example earlier we said okay if you have a gate here right we want to know up to what height we can take the gate so that you know gate is not affected by discharge when the flow is happening let's say if the if this point because of the pier the flow profile increased and our gate was here and the flow was here it will affect the gate it will cause damage to the gate so we have to keep gate a little bit higher so that means we have to know the upper nap profile also for example this is uh, somewhere in india i think this is pair here this is pair here this is pair here so all of them are basically affecting the upper nap profile here you see and downstream also we see from this figure also downstream also there is an effect of the profile right this is uh, along the pairs here you can see that the effect is effect of the pair is not only at the upstream but also at the downstream so uh, this is basically same thing saying we have different bays okay this is abutment on the left side and this is uh, bay number 1 bay number 2 you have pairs in between them and this flow basically is on the left side okay so this is experimental data this is in bay number 1 what is happening to the flow near the bay basically profile is little bit higher than the abutment we have to see that also we have to make sure that doesn't happen Then the last, this is, I think, the last slide. So just bear with me. I'll give you two minutes extra to complete the quiz. Um, this is the pressure distribution. Okay, you have pier here, right? This is the crest level, and this is upstream crest. And you can directly go here and see how much is the pressure at each and every point. So that is shown here. So this is the pressure divided by design head. So we can say pressure. just before the head is little bit lower it decreases and as we know the profile we are trying to make sure that there is no pressure right ideally at design conditions there should be no pressure over the spillway and for this condition which is ideal condition the operating head is equal to design head there is indeed almost zero pressure throughout the line throughout the length of the spillway but before before the spillway there is some negative pressure and that is that is because you know at this point upstream you have some head edge and as the flow moves its uh, head potential head is being converted to kinetic energy but there is still some head here so that's why there is a decrease in the pressure head up to when it completely becomes 0000 throughout the uh, spillway but when you have a low spillway right when you have for example uh, the, the this kind of spillway which is not when the when the depth of the spillway when the depth uh, is little bit higher okay that time the pressure will be negative as we have seen because of the cavitation so that that is this case the pressure is all the time negative because the uh, height of the the head is more 
and when the head is less the pressure will be positive because it is not exactly the trajectory profile because the depth is a little bit lesser so we can see from these curves all these the theory that we have discussed that basically matches the experiments also okay i think that is it for today um uh, quiz is posted so let's try to solve this quiz uh, i think i have given 8:55 time so uh, we are 3 minutes late so maybe 4 minutes late so you can take up to 9 to solve the quiz uh, i think the quiz is posted can uh, someone confirm whether the quiz is posted or not Uh, is the quiz posted? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, turn your cameras on then. Okay. Good. Shubham, turn your camera on, please. 